the last few months, Skylum has released several updates to Luminar Neo, a couple of major ones and several minor ones. In this video, I'll give you an overview of what's new in the recent updates, as well as my thoughts and review of those new features. I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor, and if you want to learn all about photo editing, you're in the right place. So let's get started. There have been five releases since my last video on Luminar Neo updates. Let me run through them quickly just to tell you what was in each release. Version 1.6.0 saw the release of the most recent extension to be added to the Luminar Neo lineup, Magic Light AI. I did a video on how to use this new tool. You can click here to get to that video now or check the link in the description area below. In addition to the extension being added, we also saw some additional camera support added. Update 1.6.2 saw the addition of the Face Enhancer AI to the Upscale AI extension, as well as Super Sharp. I did not make a video about this one, and the short answer as to why is that it doesn't work very well, and it does some very strange things. I'll show you a couple of examples, but as of now, I don't recommend using the Face Enhancer option when you're using those extensions. Next, update 1.6.3 saw the addition of an onboarding feature. However, with the subsequent update 1.7.0, it seems to have disappeared. So I can't really show you that one because it doesn't exist anymore. The next major update 1.7.0 saw the addition of two things that I was really glad to see added. Now you can use HDR Merge, Focus Stacking, and Upscale AI extensions with the Lightroom plugin version of Luminar Neo. Previously, that was not available. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Additionally, we now can hover over any preset and see a preview of it. So this is a great addition. The most recent update, 1.7.1, saw some speed improvements, export improvements, as well as several bug fixes and general overall usage of the program enhancements. If you want to see all of the updates listed with their features, go to the What's New page on the Skylum website. I'll provide a link to that in the description area below for you as well. So let's take a look at the two features that I think are great improvements to Luminar Neo and the one that's not so great. To make sure that you have the most up-to-date version of Luminar Neo, just check for updates. You can do that from the Luminar Neo menu and check for updates. You can see that I have the most current version 1.7.1. You can also click on the Luminar Neo logo and find check for updates there as well. If you are using a PC, it might be in a slightly different menu position than what you're seeing on my screen, but pull down the menu and look for check for updates. If a message pops up and lets you know that there's a new version, follow the steps to install it. When you're installing the new version for the plugins for Lightroom and Photoshop, make sure that you close both programs, Lightroom and Photoshop, install Luminar Neo, then relaunch the other programs for the plugins to take effect. Okay, let's take a look at the most exciting thing in Luminar Neo in the latest updates, and that is the ability to preview your presets before you apply them. I've chosen a few sample images. Let's take a look at this first one, a landscape image. When we bring it into the preset tab, you'll notice that, as usual, Luminar suggests some presets for you. Up in the top right-hand corner, you'll see for this photo. There are three suggestions for you of ones that are currently in your library. And if you click through to the next one, you'll see a suggestion for another preset pack that you might want to purchase from the Skylum Marketplace. So let's go ahead and choose the first one that they're suggesting, Easy Landscapes. You'll notice when you first click on the collection set of the presets, you'll see the icons next to them have a little circle as if they're thinking. It's just loading the preset so that when you hover over, you'll see the preview. Now with your mouse, when you hover over each name of the preset, you can see a sort of 
lower quality preview over the image so I can quickly and easily see if any of these work on this image. Forest Stream is one of my favorite presets and you'll see that I've got it favorited by clicking on the little heart. Long Exposure is another good one. So I would start my edits by clicking the preset. Once you've done that, you can continue editing as usual or go back and tweak any of the tools that have been applied using that preset. Let's take a look at another example. On this stock image of a dog, you'll notice that the preset collection it's chosen is called Animal Friends, so it's very appropriate. You'll see them loading once again. Once the presets are loaded, you can hover over and see how they look. So this is a great, a quick and easy way to see if any of these presets are gonna be a good starting point for your image. One thing I have noticed is that if you have created a lot of your own presets or favorited a lot and your list is quite large, let's take a look at mine, for example. You'll see the little circles loading takes a little bit longer for it to preload all of the preset looks. So the more that you have in your list or collection, the longer it takes to see the previews. Okay, they're finally loaded. And this is how long it took to load all of my presets. You can see my list is quite long. Speaking of my presets, I wanna show you some that I created that are actually in the Skyland Marketplace. If you decide to purchase them, they will show up here under purchased presets. The set that I've created is called Fabulous Faces and it's designed for portraits. However, you can apply them on any kind of image. Here's a quick overview of what some of them do. You can see that punchy black and white, antique touch, and low key portrait work really well on this image. As well, perfect headshot and glamour glow incorporate some of the skin retouching and smoothing aspects of the face AI tools. I also created one with a bit more grunge, a bit of a golden glow, and high key. I also made some specific ones to go with bokeh, and if you have an outdoor image with a sky, as a sky replacement. Let me show you how that works on another image. You'll notice that this is not a portrait image. However, the presets still work well. On this one called Sunset Magic, I did a sky replacement and included one of my own sky images in the pack for you. So you can see that even though the presets are designed for portraits, you're not limited to using them only on portraits. Check out what a great job they do on this stock image. Punchy black and white, Antique Touch, Low Key, Perfect Headshot, Glamour Glow, and High Key Portrait all work really well on this image. These are the two products that I currently have in the Skylum Marketplace. You can see Fabulous Faces, Luminar Presets. They also work on Luminar AI and Sparkling Times, which is a set of bokeh overlays. So I wanted to show you this one because when you're using a preset, you can apply a second layer, such as a texture overlay or a bokeh overlay, like in this case, as well as a sky replacement. So you can do all of those things and incorporate them into a preset. So when you do the hover over in this example, you will see the layers appear. So this is what the Sparkling Times presets look like. You get a set of bokeh, so all you have to do is click once to apply them to your image. I think this one looks pretty good on the flower. Next, let's take a look at using Luminar Neo as a plugin for Lightroom and the new functions. If you enjoy doing HDR photography and you have bracketed images, you can now send the entire set of images to Luminar Neo to use the HDR extension. But you have to do it a little differently than you normally would. Just select the images that you'd like to use. In this case, I have four in this bracketed set then right click, but instead of choosing edit in and going to Luminar Neo directly, you need to choose export. Then find the Luminar Neo section, and now you will see focus stacking, HDR merge, and upscale photo. So make sure that if you want to use those three extensions specifically, that you choose export, and then you will see the options here. I'm gonna show you HDR Merge, but the other two work exactly the same. Once you click on it, the images will upload to Luminar Neo and open the extension. 
Now before you get excited and click merge, make sure you check the options. To do that, just click the little gear icon in the bottom left corner. Here you could turn on chromatic aberration, which I recommend doing on every set of images, as well as auto alignment, which I also recommend. Ghost reduction is only needed if you have something that moved from one image to the next. In this case, I did not, so I'm going to leave it off. Then just simply click merge. Luminar Neo will grab those four images and merge them and open it in Luminar Neo as a plugin. Once it's open, you can edit as usual inside Luminar Neo. You can apply any presets or you can do any editing that you wish to do here. In this case, I'm just going to do a quick develop, give it a little bit of smart contrast and do a little bit of accent AI. Once you're happy with your edits in Luminar Neo, just click apply and the new image will be imported into Lightroom. Now you may notice something weird happened here. The image has been brought back into Lightroom and it looks kind of blue. Doesn't look at all like what we saw in Luminar. That is because for some reason, it's applying the same edits that I did on these images over here. So the original images had the color adjusted so when I took it to Neo, it did the same adjustments. To fix this problem, all you need to do is reset it inside Lightroom and you'll see exactly what you saw when you left Luminar Neo. Now you can continue editing in Lightroom. I ran another set of bracketed images through both Lightroom and the Luminar Neo HDR extension as a plugin for Lightroom. Let's take a look at the results. Here are the two images that came out of Luminar and Lightroom. You can see the Luminar Neo edit on the left and the Lightroom one on the right. There was a problem area here on the floor and Lightroom didn't do a very good job merging it. You can see there's almost a double line here where the shadow should blend a little bit nicer. And Luminar did a much better job of this difficult area. Another area that's also usually troublesome is the deep shadows. You can see that they both did a good job here, both for detail, color, and the amount of noise. In the upper corner, they also handled the amount of chromatic aberration well, as well as detail in the windows which were blown out in the original image. So I find that sometimes Lightroom does a really good job or a better job of merging HDR images and sometimes Luminar does. But now you have the ability to try them both and compare them side by side in Lightroom as I've done here. Then you can decide which is best and proceed with that one. Finally, let's take a look at the Face Enhancer AI that is part of Super Sharp and Upscale. I've got Super Sharp AI opened and I'm going to apply a middle amount of sharpening with the Face Enhancer checked off. So I'm going to select it by checking the box and choose middle. Once it's applied, I'll be back and we'll take a look at the results. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see her face better. Let's take a look at what the extension, and particularly that Face Enhancer AI, has done to this image. Click on the little eyeball next to the tool and you can see the before and after. It's changed her eyes, her eyelashes are different, and the shape of her face. So I'm not really crazy about this particular option. I find if you do it without the face enhancer, it works much better. Let's take a look at one more example using the face enhancer AI. This time I'm going to run it on universal and low. I have noticed that low tends to work fairly well with the super sharp AI and medium, not so much. Sometimes when you run the super sharp on the medium setting, you end up with part of the image being sharpened and part of it actually blurrier than the original. So play around with this tool and experiment, but take it with a grain of salt because I think that this particular extension needs a bit more work before it's ready for prime time. Once again, we've got the face enhancer. Let's take a look at what it's doing this time. In the before image, I've already done some editing on this one. So you can see that it's nicely edited, her skin is smooth, and her eyes are sharp. After running the extension, the shape of her eyes has completely changed, as well as her mouth and her face. 
Let's see what happens if I turn it off and we just try the sharpening without the face enhancer. This is much better. When I zoom in and take a look at just her eyes close up, you can see the before and after is doing a nice job around the eyes, particularly. So if you have challenges with sharpness in your image, I definitely recommend not using the face enhancer, just the tool itself. I have another little bonus tip for you. If you want to add sharpening, I'm going to undo this one, and you don't have the extension or you don't want to use it, go to the details panel and drag up the small details slider. Notice what a great job it does on sharpening, particularly the eyes. So I will use this little trick to sharpen eyes and just brush it in to that area. So I'm gonna get a brush that's not so soft, a little smaller, and then I will literally just paint it in to the parts of the image that I want sharp. In this case, the eye, like so. Make sure you get the eyelashes, if the eyes in the portrait are sharp, your image will look sharper overall. Let's try the eyebrows as well. Likewise, hair works great with this slider. Let's see what it's doing before and after. I'm gonna take it up to an extreme just to show you really what it's doing. Before and after. One thing to make note of with this tool, if you're using the small detail slider, is it does tend to add quite a bit of noise. So make sure that you don't paint it on the skin, for example, and you keep it on areas that only need to be sharpened. Because if we sharpen the skin and the details here, watch what happens. She's going to look a little bit wrinkly and bumpy. So you definitely don't want to add this type of detail onto the skin. But there's my little tip of the day for you. If the super sharp AI isn't working, try details and the small details slider. If you enjoyed this video and got some tips and would like to learn more about Luminar Neo from me, check out Luminar Neo The Complete Course now. If you'd like to watch another video here on YouTube, click here. Until next time, keep practicing and we'll see you soon.